Nobody likes chunky and disjointed ukulele sounds. When you're trying to switch chords and you're like, eh, 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 eh. that's the worst, all right? Eh. We're already at a dis disadvantage because it's a smaller instrument, so we gotta keep it smooth. Today we're learning about transitioning smoothly between chords, all right? You may have been trying to practice this just by drilling things, maybe just chords that you see a lot and just drilling them over and over again. All well and good, the most efficient way to do this is to practice chords and changing between them with some of these tips and tricks inside a chord scale. A chord scale is a group of chords that sound good together. So we're gonna do all the chords in the key of C. I'm gonna run through the chords first, and then we're gonna talk about how we can kind of use some of these chips, tips, chips, chips and tricks. <laughs> so C major, all right? Very important that you use your ring finger to play the C major chord, all right? Open, 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 three. Now again, a lot of your smoothness will be contextual, just like in real life. But for the purpose of what we're doing today, use your ring finger and get to use it. Get, get comfortable using your ring finger just to arrive there. Even though your middle finger or your pointer finger might be stronger, it's all about the ring finger right now, okay? So, C major. The next chord is gonna be D minor. All right, now you may have seen a D minor like this where it's two, two, one, open. We're just gonna do, we're gonna skip the G string and then just go two, one, open. Okay, you already might see where this is going. Look, C to D minor. The one chord in the key of C to the two chord. That's how we can communicate different chords where they exist in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Don't worry about that. But C major to D minor. The next chord is gonna be E minor. Where is this from the bottom up? Two, three, four. A little staircase action. You can get that open G string here if you want at this point. Then the four chord is gonna be F major, two, open, one, open. G major, open, two, three, two. And then A minor, two, open, open, open. Okay, so a lot of times I don't really get too stuck up on which fingers you use as long as you can get it to sound good. But for this lesson specifically, I want you to use the same fingerings that I'm using, all right? So the one chord to the two chord is where we're gonna start right here. Now the nice thing is we can make these with completely different fingers. Your ring finger has that one chord, that C major, and then your middle finger and your pointer finger come down on two and one respectively on the middle two strings to give you that D minor chord. C. D minor, C, D minor. And then now what you're doing is you're connecting these two fingers as one kind of shape, and then you're just releasing and then swapping it out from the other shape. C, D minor, C, D minor. Really kind of do this, where you're just strumming just a downstroke to give yourself a deadline. But you want it to be smooth, all right? So if you're trying to do it this tempo, not working, slow down whatever the tempo is that'll get you to go back and forth. All right, remember, speed is not important right now. It's about getting the fingering right and building good habits. They're gonna be actionable when you play songs, all right? Now, this might be the most important tip that you can do, or that you can use when you go to the next chord, from D minor to E minor, all right? We're moving two fingers as one into a different location, all right? So we're going from two, one, open, and then my middle finger and my pointer finger are gonna go down a fret, down a string. But instead of going like that, you would never do that. Like if someone's chasing you and you're trying to escape, you wouldn't go in straight lines, you, you wouldn't go perpendicular like that, you would jump diagonally, you'd cut through the yard, you'd cut through the 7-Eleven parking lot, just like that, right? So again, think of almost the idea of this is if you just keep your fingers like this and you just move the ukulele into a different spot, those fingers are gonna to be together, right? So that's exactly what we want. We want the idea of locking these two fingers into a shape that can then be located into a different part of the ukulele, right? So now when I move these diagonal one, I can drop my ring finger down on the fourth right here, and then I've got that third chord, the three chord, E minor. One, two, three. And see how like smooth that is? Because I'm not really shuffling my fingers trying to like contort them in different shapes. I'm really, that, that ring finger C, really
really kind of sets me up for greatness because it's already there. I already know these are gonna move together and then the ring finger can kind of do its own thing. And then eventually this will start happening by itself. So that's what I want you to spend the most time practicing, going from this D minor to this E minor. Because, you know, it may conceptually seem very simple, but it actually can be kind of challenging until you really get it down. So we're locking these two together, moving them as one, and then bringing that ring finger hammer down. Together as one, we arrive back and forth. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. And one, two, and three, and four. And one, two, and three, four. And one, two, and three, and four. And one, two chord, three chord. There's a contextual spot where I might want to go to my pointer finger, all right? Not to jump ahead, but if we've got an E minor and we know we're gonna end on C, instead of going back to here, maybe I just wanna pop that open right there. So there's a good contextual example of when you might wanna use a different fingering for a chord that you're already going with, right? But we're sticking with the ring finger here. One, two, three, four, all right? The four chord, F major, two, open, one, open. And again, your middle finger is out front. It's really exactly like the D minor, except your middle finger just pops the string closer to your face, right? D minor, F major. This is a good way, the two chord to the four chord. Maybe just work on that because then now we have one finger that you're training independence for while your pointer finger kind of stays locked on to that first fret on the E string. Two, three, four, and one. going all over the place. Next one is going to be G major, all right? So again, let's look at the transition from F major to G major, just like that. All right, so this is going to be interesting because I'm thinking of the anchor of this chord as being my ring finger. I want to drop that to the third fret of the E string, right? Which is just like a C major, but you just move it up, right? So all these kind of relate to each other in some way. So the nice thing about going from an F to a G is your ring finger is free. It's like a free agent. So you can already be planning on getting it to that third fret. You can arrive there first, come down, and then now the way that I think of this, I think the smoothest way to transition from here is get your ring finger in position, and then just take your middle finger all the way down. So if you lock that in first, you're already getting something right, right? It's not gonna be like, eh, eh, eh. You lock that down, worst case scenario, it sounds like that. Best case scenario, it sounds like that, okay? So get the ring finger established, and then the other two fingers can kind of come back and forth. In fact, a good way to practice this is to keep your ring finger just locked, and then, Play, play it like this. So even though I'm not hearing an F major chord when I do this, again, now what I'm doing is I've got my G major, open two, three, two. I'm gonna keep my ring finger there. I'm gonna have my middle finger jump back to the second fret and my pointer finger is gonna go to the first fret, which my ring finger is on. So I can't even hear what my pointer finger is doing, but this is good just to kind of like practice having two fingers navigating, almost revolving around that locked ring finger. So that works out. G major, I'm going, I'm in the F shape, but I still have that ring finger down. And then I have the F major chord when I lift the ring finger, okay? So this is the four chord and the five chord in the key of C. And then this is really easy because I go to the six chord, which is just A minor, two, open, open, open. You may have played an A minor like this, two, open, 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 because it's just like an F major chord without your pointer finger. Again, con context is really important. So if you're playing a song where a minor, a minor follows F major, or maybe you're just switching between the two, it wouldn't make sense to do this, unless you're really showing off trying to impress people. But the way that I want you to practice this is running through the chord scale with these fingerings because eventually 
all these moves just become ingrained. And that is the most efficient way to play through all the chords in the key of C, right? It's actually really quite easy. The one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord, and the one chord. And then also when you think of chords as numbers within a scale, it gets way easier to communicate different chord progressions. One really popular chord progression is a one, five, six, four. Okay, tons and tons of songs. Countless examples, you'll probably even hear it when I start playing this. One, five, six, four. So again, there's my one chord. My five chord, remember, I already said you can just pop your ring finger up to get that G, C, G, What's six? A minor. Four. One chord. Five chord. Six chord. Four chord. Now I played that six two different ways. I can play it with my pointer finger or my middle finger. Again, contextually, what makes more sense to you? One five? Is it harder for you to go from the five to the six chord? or the five to the four chord coming from the six chord. So all these things eventually dictate. It can be confusing at first to be like, ah, which fingers do I use for this? I do think that like once you kind of get a system under your fingertips, really your brain is gonna do all this work behind the scenes as far as like which one do you choose. The, the important thing right now is just to get used to knowing where these chords are. And then the more you practice, the easier it gets for your hand to naturally locate where they, where they are, and then you don't have to think about it. Again, I really think that, I can't stress enough how important the D minor to the E minor move is. Even though this isn't the most common thing that you're gonna see in chord progressions, but I think there's just so much merit to moving two fingers as one to a different location and adding a third finger. And once you can do that, everything's gravy. Everything's gravy, baby, from there on in. So again, try not to get in any high speed pursuits, but if you do, make sure you use the cutty lane through the 7-Eleven and not going around, just like you learned from your old pal, Sean. Thank you to Journey Instruments for sending this duke over. I have an affiliate link in the description. Any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section or the website. I'll talk to you soon.